This was the first time in history that a Speaker of the House has been removed, that a motion to vacate was successful. The vote was 216 to 210. I, I, I got to admit, I didn't, I don't think anybody knew where there was all this talk about would it get tabled? What would happen? You heard us have this discussion yesterday with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, there was talk that, you know, McCarthy would try to save himself, cut some deals. Gates was accusing him of being with Democrats. What were the Democrats going to do? Were they going to vote in a block? Uh, you know, it, it was amazing to me, but I, I've got so much to break down today. I'm going to tell you about who's running, who the chances are, where they go. Um, McCarthy obviously spoke with reporters after the fact. I want to talk about that in a second. Um, but let's put this in context. We are 44 days from another government shutdown. Okay. All of these guys who wanted to vote what they call regular order one bill at a time. The idea was buy some more time. Maybe you can get some of the stuff through, force the Senate to deal with it. They're now going home for a week. They won't be back until next Tuesday. You know, I, I was like, hey, the, the Vatican knows how to do this. When the Pope dies or steps down, everybody comes to the Vatican. They lock him in a room and until there's white smoke, they don't get to leave. That's what they should be doing. Why are they doing this right now? Why are they allowing this? To, they, what, what's going on? The first time in my entire life, I've wanted people to stay in Washington, D.C. First time in my life. Normally, I don't want them in D.C. Go away. Get out. Stop doing things and tinkering with our laws and making things happen. This is the first time I've wanted them to stay in D.C. Because until you have a speaker, you can't do anything. Everything stops. Everything comes to a screeching halt. McCarthy was on fire. And by the way, I will just say this. No matter what you think of Kevin McCarthy, and I know that there are people on both sides of this, he did the right thing last night. He could have clung to power. He could have made deals with Democrats. He could have wheeled and dealed his way. That's Washington. That's a fact. He chose not to. He put his conference in his country ahead of his own political ambitions. And I got to be honest with you, I don't see that a lot in D.C., that's not how it works. People are so power hungry. They want to stay in power. They want the trappings of everything. They want to get invited to the dinners and whatever else. He gave it up. So no matter what you think of him, no matter what you think of him, just know that he put everything else before his own political power. And I think that says a lot. So you can hate him. You can think he didn't do well. Blah, 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 blah. All I'm telling you is, is that he made a decision yesterday that I think should be applauded because not a lot of people in this town do the right thing. Um, and I think that that too often, it's a very selfish political motivation that gets people going. Um, it was also funny. So, so Gates is out there making the rounds. Here's what I said yesterday. There's no plan. No plan. So that's what I'm saying. We're going to go off. Uh, for a week and come back and hopefully the people call each other. We'll go through all the candidates in just a second. Gates is, is walking around saying only in Washington is taking a few extra days of votes deemed chaos. Do you know what chaos is? Chaos is, you know, the global reserve currency. I don't get like, but that's, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. If you want to change him, tell us what the plan is. And th this is, he, everyone keeps making, he tries to make this a binary choice. He could have said, here's what I want to do. There's a better leader. Let's go down that road, whatever else. He threw the grenade and walked away. He had plenty of time to put his fundraising emails out and make a ton of money. A real leader says, here's what I want to do. Here's how I want to take you. Here's what I want to take you and here's how to do it. He didn't. And I'm just telling you that there's a, there's a difference. You can side with Matt. You can believe that we didn't have we, we should have been doing things differently. Um, I get that. And Marjorie Taylor Greene was here yesterday. She made some great points about the schedule, how we could have been doing things. All fair points. By the way, that's actually the majority leader that sets the schedule, not the speaker. And again, I'm not defending anyone. I'm just explaining. And that's part of the problem is that everyone wants to, you know, Gates gets up there and talks about all these things, 35 years of congressional resolutions and all this stuff. That's fine. Why is that Kevin McCarthy's problem? I mean, we were talking about this before, but Chip Roy, Massey from, from Kentucky, uh, Jim Jordan, all these guys are saying that, that it's better dealing with McCarthy than anyone else. And I, I'm not here trying to be a McCarthy apologist. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm saying is, if you want to replace him, tell me who the better option is. How are things going to be better? What's the plan to get things done, to advance a more conservative agenda? to cut the size of government, 
to reduce spending. I'm all for that, to stand up to China, to get some extractions from the Senate and the Biden administration. Tell me what that plan is, and I'm all for it. But throwing a grenade in and walking away and saying, oh, well, and sending out fundraising emails is not a plan to get things done. We look like idiots. And I was watching all the morning shows, and I really don't care what NBC thinks. And, you know, maybe it's just a, a couple hours here and there that we have to deal with of getting this done. And maybe we'll have a speaker, you know, in a, in a couple of days, and it's worth going through the process. But everyone's looking and saying these clowns can't even, you know, elect their own team. And they want us to run the country. Now, do I think a day or two of going through a machination of choosing a new leader is, is horrible? No, believe me, by the time we go to vote in November of next year, this will long be forgotten. My point is, are we actually going to use this as an opportunity to govern and get things done? Right? Or are we just going to rearrange some deck chairs? But I, I don't, I don't think this is on. I'm going to cover a couple more things and, and then we've got Derek Van Orden here, who's a Navy SEAL. He doesn't know how to, he, he knows how to fight. I'll tell you that. Uh, I don't want to get his, his take on this. Um, I actually, McCarthy came out last night. He was gracious. He was classy about this thing. And I think that's important to, to know. Um, Patrick McHenry, if you were watching the proceedings yesterday, congressman from North Carolina, he's the speaker pro tem, right? So he, very limited power, but he kind of is the caretaker until a new suit. You know what he does right off the bat? He kicks Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer out of their offices. Now, what does that mean? Okay, in the Capitol, there's what they call hideaways. And there's these little offices that are really, um, you know, they're ceremonial. So that if you have some constituents and you're over in the, in the Capitol versus where their offices are across the street, you can bring them over and it's, it's nice. It's, and it's convenient, right? You're off the floor. You can go downstairs. You don't have to walk all the way back to your house office building. Um, they usually go to the majority, but because Pelosi had been speaker for so long, they let her keep one. And because they're usually reserved for leadership, but they're no longer in leadership, right? That was the idea is that they're, th this is where out of respect for the longevity that they both serve, they would get these offices in the Capitol. Well, McHenry said, get out. Pelosi goes, oh, I'm in California at Dianne Feinstein's um, funeral, and I won't be there tomorrow because McHenry says, I'm going to rekey the office. Bam. Well, let's be honest with you. Do you really think that Nancy Pelosi is going to be moving furniture and packing stuff up? Seriously? I mean, the, the media is buying all into this. Oh, she's not going to be here because she's in California. Literally, like she was going to be doing anything anyway. Do you really think that Nancy Pelosi was going to be there putting stuff in boxes? Her staff was going to do it. I mean, so... I get it sounds cute and we all want to have sympathy for him. But hey, look, the Democrats all joined to get rid of him and they have to pay the political consequences. Sorry, here you go. I don't know why they had an office in the first place. That just shows you McCarthy was a little too gracious probably. But McHenry comes in there and says, get out. You have till tomorrow. I'm rekeying these offices. Boom, 